Alton Towers Resort is the UK's largest theme park, with over 40 major attractions set within 500 acres of a former stately home. The resort includes three hotels, ten themed worlds, and seven world-renowned roller coasters. The park is operated by Merlin Attractions Operations Limited, better known as Merlin Entertainment, who also operate leading attractions of Thorpe Park, Chessington World of Adventures, Legoland Windsor, Sea Life Centres, the Dungeons Attractions, and Madame to Swords. In the years leading up to 2015, Alton Towers was by far the UK's most popular theme park, with close to 3 million visitors per year. However, in June 2015, a collision between two trains on the park's flagship ride, the Smiler, and the resulting media coverage of the event would result in a devastating effect on consumer confidence. This would lead to a significant drop of a third to less than 2 million visitors in the years following the accident, not only affecting Alton Towers as gate attendances at parks across the UK would see similar drops. 16 people were injured in the accident, two of them receiving life-changing injuries. Whilst the cause of the accident could be attributed to human error, no individuals would be held responsible and Alton Towers operator, Merlin Attractions Operations Limited, would be fined £5 million for failures leading to the accident. This video series will use schematic diagrams and annotations to illustrate what happened in the time leading up to the accident. These will include illustrations and animations of the ride's control panel, who was in control, and the participants and their relevant locations around the ride during the crucial time leading up to the accident. The sources used for this video are the Health and Safety Executive Factual Report of the Smiler Accident, an Expert Witness Report, a Witness Statement, two Health and Safety Executive Summaries, the Daily Ride Report Sheet, and the Sentencing Remarks. The Accident in Brief Heavy winds caused an empty train to stall on the ride circuit in the Staffordshire Knot element. The Smiler's control computer registered an occupied block and stopped the next train, loaded with 16 riders, from entering the block. The occupied block was reset by the Alton Towers technical team, who incorrectly believed this to be an error. The train with the riders then proceeded into the block and collided with the stranded train, injuring the 16 riders aboard. This video series will be split into three parts, essential background information, the accident timeline, and the aftermath and health and safety executive report conclusions. <laughs> In order to fully understand the events leading up to the crash, some essential background information is required. Now if you're a coaster enthusiast and already understand how roller coaster trains and blocking systems work, please do bear with me during the first couple of minutes of this video as there is some more specialist information later on. The Smiler is a steel roller coaster designed and manufactured in Germany by Gertschlauer Amusement Rides GmbH. The budget, including groundwork, installation and marketing was approximately £18 million. It is a first generation infinity coaster and boasts 1,170 metres of track, two lift hills and a top speed of 52.8 miles per hour. Out of 2021, the Smiler still holds the record for most inversions on a single roller coaster at 14. It was built with five trains, each consisting of four cars of four riders in a single row, for a total of 16 riders per train. This gave the rider theoretical throughput of 1,200 riders per hour. Now there are some roller coasters, mainly family ones, where the trains have their own power. However, most roller coaster trains are not powered, they do not have motors or brakes to propel and stop them on the track. Instead, they need alternative methods of propulsion. Some propel the train to a maximum speed using a launch track. Whilst on traditional coasters, the trains are pulled to the right high point using a chain or cable. And the speed and motion of the train is then in the hand of gravity thereafter. To slow or stop the train, the speed is retarded in a brake run, where the braking mechanism is constructed within the track. In the station and other areas where the speed is relatively low, the motion of the train is controlled by tyres within the track, known as kicker wheels. If a roller coaster train stalls, or valleys, in other words gets stuck partway around the track, they usually need additional intervention to get them moving again. If the train is on level track, it might be possible to push it, If it's on a shallow slope, they could winch it. But if it's in the middle of an element, such as a loop or roll, they will likely need to crane it off. Given this limitation, roller coaster trains have only two primary safety concerns, to keep riders safely within their seats during the duration of the ride, and to stay on the track, only moving either forwards or backwards along it. They are not designed to survive a heavy impact with another train, or an impact with any objects if they were to leave the track. 
Now, if a roller coaster only has one train, there is no risk in the first instance that two trains will ever collide. However, the Smiler has a ride duration of approximately three minutes, and it takes at least one additional minute to unload and load the train. So if the ride were to be operated with just one train, this would lead to a theoretical throughput of less than 240 riders per hour. Given that on a busy day there can be up to 1,500 people in the Smiler's queue, this would lead to some pretty horrendous queue times. Now we could make the train longer, but longer trains have a greater imbalance in their dynamic forces. This can result in a large variation in the intensity of the ride depending on where the rider sits. As such, longer roller coasters need to use multiple trains to operate efficiently. To do this, and keep train movement safe, roller coasters use a blocking system. In principle, the block sections are managed by traffic lights in the ride's computer control system. Whenever a train is in a block, the brakes in the preceding block prevent a train from entering the same block. This acts as a failsafe should a train fail to complete the ride circuit. The brakes on the preceding block will prevent another train from entering that same block, hence preventing a collision. Once the valid train has been removed, there needs to be a way of resetting the computer to confirm that the block is now free of a train and allow the ride to continue to operate as normal. The Smiler has nine blocks for the operation of up to five trains. There's the station, block one with one inversion and a brake hold at the end, lift one, block three with six inversions and a brake hold at the end, lift two, block five with seven inversions and a brake hold at the end, station hold number two, transfer track and station hold number one. The station, together with the two station holds, the transfer track and the brake hold of block 5, form ground level. All five trains can be parked in this location. Now with five trains progressing through nine blocks, the ride needs a very complex and clever computer to control it. In industry, such computers are called Programmable Logic Controllers, or PLCs. To control the ride, operators and technicians use the Human Machine Interface, HMI, or Control Panel. The Smiler opened in 2013 and has a rather simple and ergonomic HMI. Whilst I am not a ride operator, it is not difficult to predict the functions of the controls. There are two keyed switches. The first allows the HMI to be turned on and off. The second is used to switch between the four operating modes. There's an emergency stop button, which will stop all ride movements wherever they happen to be on the ride. A station stop, which localizes this action to just the station area. There are buttons to allow riders on and off the ride, opening the restraints, opening the gates, and closing the gates. There are two dispatch buttons, or start, two use so that one cannot be pressed accidentally. There is a central touchscreen panel which has further functions that require the user to log in with a password. The touchscreen panel includes additional functions and block selection for manual control. It also displays the ride track plan with occupied and unoccupied blocks in blue and white respectively. Finally, there is a fault reset button used to clear the current fault. The HMI is situated in the control cabin, which is part of the station building complex. The lower levels of the station building include the ride shop, a portion of the queue with the bagging area, and likely the PLC. This part of the building also completely encloses block one, including the first inversion and its brake hold. The upper levels include the maintenance building, where trains are serviced and maintained, and their associated spare parts are stored. The station on and off platforms are inside the station building upper levels. The control cabin is situated above the platform and contains the HMI. There is only one window which looks out at the platforms, all of the points of the ride are observed via 25 CCTV cameras which display via two large screens in the control cabin. Other than the openings for the track, there are no observation windows in the station building complex. Finally, there are maintenance and evacuation catwalks at strategic points, ground level, brake sections and lifts, with their own satellite control panels for limited block control. The Smiler has four operating modes, which can be switched between using a key on the HMI. Mode 1 is test, not usually in use, likely only after a hardware or software change. Mode 2 is maintenance, used to add and remove trains from the system and to clear and test faults. Mode 3 normal is used under normal operating conditions, and unique to the Smiler is mode 4, EVAC. This allows trains to be brought back to ground level. Modes 1 and 2 are used by the Technical Services Department, and modes 3 and 4 by the Ride Operations Department. 
The Ride Operations Department at Alton Towers Resort is the team that includes all those who operate the rides. The ride operator is responsible for the ride whenever guests are on board. In this video, the ride operator will be identified in green. The Technical Services Department at Alton Towers Resort is the team that includes all those who service and maintain the rides. The hands-on crew is made up of mechanical and electrical technicians. Now, in the reports, their correct full titles are given as mechanical and electrical maintenance engineers. However, these are often shortened to mechanical engineer and electrical engineer, which are inaccurate. For the purpose of this video, I shall be using the correct industry title of mechanical and electrical technician. Now, technicians are not allowed to operate the ride whenever guests are on board. In this video, the mechanical technicians will be identified in purple and the electrical technicians identified in blue. In normal operation, ride operators use mode 3. Normal. In mode 3, the functions they control are the air gates, harness locks, and the ability to dispatch a train of guests. They are primarily concerned with activities in the stationary of the ride. The PLC controls train movements outside the station. Once the ride operator is satisfied a train is ready, they simultaneously press the two dispatch buttons, and the ride's PLC takes over in progressing the train from one block to the next until it safely returns to the station. The ride operator does not have to wait for a train to return to ground level before dispatching the next one. In theory, each train can be dispatched as soon as riders are secured and ready. After a fault reset and with permission from Central Control at Alton Towers Resort, ride operators can also use Mode 4, EVAC, also known as Code 0. In this setup, the start buttons do not dispatch a train, but instead bring trains back to ground level. Suppose the smiler is in this configuration with three trains at ground level, a train on lift 1 and a train on lift 2. Pressing the dispatch buttons here will return the trains one at a time back to ground level. Once at ground level, the trains can be evacuated more quickly than if this had to be done part way around the ride. The technical services team primarily use mode 2, where minor faults can be cleared by using the fault reset button. For more complex faults and additional operations, the technical team member needs to log into the HMI with a username and password. Mode 2 allows full manual operation, where trains can be moved independently from one block to another, rather than automatically by the PLC. Faults will still arise in Mode 2, and the PLC will still restrict train movements so that two trains cannot be in the same block. That concludes part 1 of this video. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out part 2, the accident timeline.